Okay, I swear I clicked IMDb and it took me to Amazon. <laughs> uh, I mean, IMDb is technically owned by Amazon, but... Yeah, but you would think that if I'm typing imdb.com into the search thing, it would take me to imdb.com mm-hmm. and not Amazon, but apparently Amazon is so greedy. <laughs> yeah. Like, they tried to sell me the seasons of Once Upon a Time. No, oh, yeah. <laughs> no, Amazon... That's the problem with Amazon Prime. Like, at least with almost every other live streaming or like streaming service thing you pay for it and then you get episodes of whatever show you want with amazon it's like you pay for it and they're like oh yeah we've got once upon a time and you're like great oh let's just go to amazon and watch once upon a four bucks per episode that's not happening bezos yeah i am not going to pay you four dollars to watch the paintball episode of community when they first said that Russo brothers were going to do the, uh, whichever movie they ended up doing, uh, Captain f- America. Yeah, the first one they Winter did was Soldier. Winter Soldier. And yeah, then, but... yeah, that's the thing is that I haven't watched, I'm for the first time ever going through Community. I've never seen the show. I've seen clips. I've seen a ton of clips, but I've never sat down and watched the show. And so it's like, oh, these are the Russo brothers, the Marvel guys, and apparently this is where they got their start, was doing this show. Yeah, I have some... We're, we're not talking about uh, Community, even though I do have some hot takes that the show is kind of overrated. No, we're I'm... talking about... We're talking about the the amazing fantasy series Once Upon a Time, starring a bunch of people who apparently didn't get anything else, but we'll get into that. Uh, welcome, everyone. My name is Ian. Uh, I, I am the person who does this. And this is Sean. He's the person who does this. And we are... And we have opinions about the TV show community. So, why this show <laughs> sucks. We are here talking about Once Upon a Time. Which Sean yeah. has been going through the entire series. Uh, I've watched every single episode. And then I watched the first episode of Season step 7 and stopped watching. So, I, I've decided to make it my mission that I'm just going to watch entire series of shows that I probably... like. Like, if I'm starting it, I'm going to finish it now. But Once Upon a Time. Once Upon a Time was a, a TV show that ABC did to basically try and reinvent their uh, Disney princess formula by introducing a brand new character named uh, Elizabeth Swan. And then... Emma Swan. Emma Swan, sorry. Uh, Emma Swan. Elizabeth Swan is from Pirates. So Disney created this show, which is all of their print Disney princess stuff, and also Rumpelstiltskin's in it, and uh, mm-hmm. and yeah, the show's very... The show drives me up the wall, because, and I, I could probably go further into detail, but I've never seen a show that so slowly and gradually just gets worse over time. And there's a moment... Every person who has ever seen the show will have this moment where you're watching the show and you go, I don't even enjoy this anymore. This isn't even good anymore, and yet I'm still watching it. Uh, That moment for me hit during season five, and then I finally said, I'm done with this series at the beginning of season seven. Season seven was when I was like, I'm done. I I can't. I'm out. I literally finished season two today. It's all fresh. (laughs) <laughs> both season one and season two are fresh in my mind mm-hmm. and i'm like looking for that moment i don't see it yet but i'm i'm wait, I'm, I'm keeping an eye out for when i'm like when 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 is when is my breaking point because i'm i know that i'm good it's see that told me it's gonna happen it is and it, i'm like it happens. i've got to push past it, <laughs> it i know i know it happens to everyone but it's it's so gradual you don't notice it it you it, it's that meme where it's like there was a point where we should have stopped and we have clearly passed it but let's just keep going and see what happens like it doesn't it it it's so insidious that you're just in the middle of season 5 going what the hell is go why am i still watching this like you will hit that moment And it's fascinating to me to watch when people hit that moment. Because this is not a bad show at first. I'll tell you this. Having just finished season two Mm -hmm. and going into season three, Mm -hmm. 
I honestly feel like I'm gonna have a hard time with season three. Just like I don't I don't know anything about season three yet. All I know is like where season two left off and where they're gonna pick up. And I just I feel like unless this show can make certain characters way more interesting <laughs> I'm gonna have a difficult time. <laughs> And, I'll, and I'll, I'll, I'll explain to you why that is when we get to that point. But I guess we'll start with season one. My first note that I ever took down in regards to this series, Prince Charming shouts, hey, and chucks a sword at the evil queen. <laughs> <laughs> now, I want, uh, I want you to remember that because it's going to come back later there's a callback to this later and i don't even think it's intentional yeah that was the first thing i was like yeah this is gonna be interesting <laughs> yeah like that's an interesting tactic let's just shout at the villains walk okay so let me let me just try to set the scene for you so the evil queen shows up to snow white and prince charming's wedding yeah uh and then, and then and she's like yo i'm gonna curse you guys uh you're happy this i'm gonna take away your happy ending blah 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 and then she starts to walk away as you do. Mm-hmm. She just turns her back and just like, yeah, I'm sa- I'm going to saunter away because I'm cool like that. So Prince Charming's response is to just shout, hey, and chuck a sword at him. When I say like, he doesn't do it, it, he doesn't even do it cool. He just literally overhead chucks a sword in her general direction. <laughs> like, now, there are, this is a party. This is a wedding. She's in the midst of the audience. There are people in the general direction in which he's chucking the sword in a incredibly inaccurate manner. It's a miracle that nobody else got cut. Yeah. <laughs> so that like like you said, the show is basically a take on um all the all the fairy tale characters that you've heard about. Mm-hmm. Pretty much e- any fairy tale character that's ever been rendered by Disney. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Is, is real and exists in another world. The story literally starts with Prince Charming kissing Snow White mm-hmm. and like breaking the sleeping curse spell on her mm-hmm. and then they get married. At their wedding, the evil queen shows up and she's like, look, I'm tired of y'all beating me. <laughs> y'all beat me all the time, which is true. Yeah. Because you'll, they'll go into a long list of all the times that they've just utterly destroyed this chick. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And she's like, look, I'm going to curse you, and I'm going to put a curse, and I'm going to curse everybody. And she does. And basically what ends up happening is the curse takes everybody from all the fairy tale realms that you've ever heard of and puts them on Earth, like our Earth, the real Earth, the real world, in modern times, or at least in, what, 2011? (laughs) Yeah, in 2011 is when the show started. Yeah, 2011, modern modern day, Maine. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, in, in just like a town in the middle of nowhere, Podunk, Maine, mm-hmm. in the middle of the woods, and just plop a town there, and everybody lives in this town, and they, they've forgotten who they are. Mm-hmm. So the key is that they, they don't know that they're the fairy tale characters. They just think they're regular people living in Maine. Yep. And nobody remembers except for the evil queen mm-hmm. and some other character that I'll mention later. <laughs> and uh, the evil queen ends up adopting this kid uh, named Henry. Yeah. And Henry is the Henry is the tit. <laughs> this Henry kid is, is amazing. Yeah, Henry's awesome. <laughs> Henry as a character is so great. So he knows the truth, mm-hmm. and basically the, the premise of the first episode is basically he shows up to this. Oh, fuck. Okay, so uh, I got now. I got to go back. Rewind back. <laughs> now we got to go back. <laughs> Before the curse is cast, Snow White and Prince Charming basically are just like they hatch a plan where they're just like the only way that we're gonna break this curse is if. We send our unborn child to the real world first mm-hmm. so that she can get there before the curse is cast mm-hmm. so that she won't be affected by the curse so that she can break it when she turns 28 years old, which is a really arbitrary age. Yes, it is. <laughs> it, it is a strangely arbitrary age. I don't know why it's 28 years old, but it is 28 years old. Like, like at that point, it could have just been like, you know, we could just say 30. <laughs> But we didn't. Why not 30? But we didn't. No. And I'm, I'm wondering if it's just... I'll get into that maybe later. Yeah. But basically, she's got to break the curse when she turns 28 years old. Uh, so that happens. They send her through. She's, you know, a baby. So she gets, like, you know, put in the foster system. She grows up in our world. She's 28 years old. Mm-hmm. On her 28th birthday, this kid shows up at her door. And he's like, hi, my name's Henry, and I'm your son. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it turns out... That 10 years ago, she had a kid and gave him up for adoption 
and apparently he got adopted by the evil queen in Storybrooke. Yeah, because Storybrooke which is has, the name of the town. Yeah, so Storybrooke has existed already for twenty eight years. Twenty eight years. Yeah. Uh, evil queen is like, yo, I want a baby, so she just randomly adopts this kid, thinking, well, thinking it's random, but it turns out it's Snow White and Prince Charming's baby's kid. Yeah, <laughs> because because magic. Because this, yeah, because this... magic and fate, and destiny, and whatever. <laughs> Henry shows up. Mm-hmm. Yo, I'm your son. Takes her back to Storybrook, and the series gets started, which yeah. is basically this centers on just Emma versus Regina mm-hmm. for the fate of Henry's soul. The one thing I love about season one in the way that uh, the Regina evil queen dichotomy is done is that Regina is very um, sympathetic as a. Right. As an antagonist, she's not really a bad guy. That's the thing about Regina as a character is that she is very, like, forward. She's very, like, I'm going to do what I think is best for my son. But she doesn't necessarily portray herself as evil. Yes, she is the evil queen. But, yeah, yeah, I I like Regina as a character early on because she is... She, like, it's this weird thing where she is technically lawful, um, like, I would say maybe lawful evil, but as a person, you sympathize with her and you empathize with her. And you can really tell in season one that she's just trying to make this thing work. The story gets played as basically it's just two moms pretty much fighting over this kid. Mm Mm-hmm. And it's just like, you feel for both of them. Oh, yeah. So, so I think the reason why the first season is so good is because it just kind of like, it stuck to that. Mm-hmm. And it's like, it didn't stray away from that. It was just like, yeah, this is what our show is. There's a prophecy about who's going to break the curse. And she's like, when she comes on her 28th birthday, you know, the final battle will begin. <laughs> and it's just like, the clock strike, the clock starts moving. And it's just like, oh, the final battle. It's like, oh, it's about, it's on. And you realize that the battle isn't really like a fight fight. It's like a battle for Henry. Oh, yeah. And then the next the next note that I put on here was, holy crap, Giancarlo Esposito is in there. <laughs> <laughs> He's, he's the mirror mirror on the wall. But originally, he was the genie. Yes, okay, there it is. From the Aladdin. Genie. Snow White's father is like, I'm going to set you free, and now come hang out with me and party. Then he finds uh, the the king's wife, who is the evil queen, yep. before she was the evil queen. Oh. Flat you out, kept, 100%. <laughs> you kept texting me constantly, talking about Regina's different outfits. Because every, like, every episode, she's got like fierce. three outfits on. Yes! <laughs> this woman has more outfits than, like, I don't I don't know who's famous for having lots of outfits. Her outfits are fire. She has a hairdo that I, straight, I said straight up looks like an 80s high top fade, but somehow she still makes it work. <laughs> I was like, how? How? Your hair looks like kid in play, but it still works for you. <laughs> how? How is this happening? Jeannie's like, yo, you kind of hot. Uh, let's hook up. And she's like, oh, no, but I have a husband. And he's like, oh, the king? Let me kill that fool. And then he kills him. And then she's like, oh, yeah, you killed him, but I'm not going to be with you because I was just using you to kill the king so that I could be the evil queen. <laughs> and she sticks him in a mirror. Or yes. no, wait, he sticks himself in a mirror. Yes. You played yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Emma cutting down the queen's tree was legit bad. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and they're going back and forth. So Emma shows up to Regina's house and just literally chops down half her apple tree. Yeah. Storylines in these in these shows get so convoluted. Yeah. Uh, speaking of convoluted, <laughs> uh, my next note was that I like Mr. Gold as a villain. <laughs> yeah. And at this point, I was like, I don't... At this point, this was early in the season. I was like, I don't know why, but for some reason, I feel like he's the real villain here. <laughs> and boy, was I right. This guy has the most necessarily circuitous plan in the history of all plans and understand when i say that it's necessarily circuitous yeah it's like all the things that like are like seemingly like why are you doing this they are for a reason Mm -hmm. (laughs) and it's just like when you start to understand once you find out what his reason is and then you see how far back his plans go oh yeah like 
what the cr- every literally everything that was ever going wrong at any time is literally this dude's fault. No, oh, yeah. <laughs> Can I say I love that you keep skipping over Snow and uh, Prince because they're just such they're non- just so nauseatingly boring. <laughs> yes, they're non characters. There's nothing to them. <laughs> like, I love you. I love you too. Okay, clearly you two love each other. Yeah, they, you like, get it. Quite literally, the the entire show, do you care if I spoil this, but, like, the entire show doesn't know what to do with these two, ever. Let's just find an excuse to get paid for our marriage. <laughs> if I gotta pick the, my top three parts, favorite parts of the show, mm-hmm. it's gonna be Regina and her outfits, <laughs> Henry just being just the coolest kid ever, and Rumpelstiltskin. And that's not in any particular order, it's just... They're, those are the t- those are the three best parts of the show. Oh yeah, uh, uh, with honorable mention number four probably being Emma Swan being a badass from time to time. Mm-hmm. And then but, Snow yeah. and Charming are there. They they exist. Yeah, they're they're there. <laughs> they and they love each other. <laughs> don't don't ever forget that they love each other because they certainly won't let you. So they have to get him to slay a freaking dragon. Now he actually slays a dragon and that was the I was like I need to skip this <laughs> that's how boring he is that's how boring of a character he is I was just like yeah this is the bo- I have never seen anybody fight a dragon and be boring <laughs> <laughs> a literal dragon like, I'm not even like like I haven't been this bored by a dragon fight since I saw a freaking Iron Fist, okay? That's how bad this was. Okay. I thought you were going to say something like Aragon or something, but yeah, no, no Iron like, Fist. But <laughs> probably worse than Aragon. Wow. To be completely honest with you. Like, I'm like, I was so bored. I was just like, oh, God, when is this part going to be over? <laughs> and they go back to uh, Rumpelstiltskin or anybody else. Literally, like, every time he or Snow White are on screen, I'm like, oh, God, please put anybody else on this screen. <laughs> And it's just like, they're the main characters of the show. Yeah. Thank God they have all these other great characters to save the show. Because oh, yeah. if this if if it was just them, I'd have given up on this already. <laughs> I'd have given up on this after, like, the first episode. Uh, after Hey and Chuck the Sword. <laughs> <laughs> That's literally the only funny thing that he does. And then everything else is just like... Snow, I will find you. I always do. <laughs> I will find you, Snow. No, I'll find you. <laughs> you know what it's like? It's like that. You ever see that meme with Spider-Man? And they're all, the three Spider-Men are always pointing at each other? <laughs> Episode 7 is the one where uh, we find out that Graham is the, the huntsman that was sent to kill Snow White. Mm-hmm. And like, there's a scene where he shoots a deer. And I was like, was that Bambi's mom? <laughs> <laughs> It's Disney, so sure, it could happen. I was like, you killed Bambi's mom, didn't you? That's, you son of a bitch. <laughs> First of all, I hated Hansel, like, a little punk. <laughs> I hated Hansel so much. Because it's like, the evil queen tells the evil queen tells them both. It's like, look, I'm going to send you into the, like, she's like, I'm going to send you into this other witch's house. And you know, the witch from Hansel and Gretel lives in, like, a gingerbread house. So she's like, but don't eat anything in the house. You're going to be tempted to eat stuff in the house. But I'm telling you, right here, right now, if you eat anything in the house, you're going to freaking die. Mm. <laughs> and so and so they're like, okay. And they're both, like, they're both looking dead in her face while she's saying this. They're like, okay. And so they literally walk up to the house. And the first thing Hansel does is he tries to lick the house. <laughs> And his sister's like, don't lick the house. It was like, she literally just told you. <laughs> don't yeah, eat the house. It, you, if, if, you, if you tell a kid, don't eat candy, and then the first thing that happens is that they see a bunch of candy, they're, like their kid brain's going to take over and go, yeah, like, what, what'd you tell me? I don't know. Hum. It's, like, it's like, don't eat this candy. You will die. Mm. <laughs> I'm going to eat this candy. Yeah. <laughs> so they get in the house. And they see the witch there, mm-hmm. and they're like, she's sleeping. Okay, let's get what we came for and get the heck out of here. So the sister goes over to grab the thing, and she grabs the thing, and she's literally, like, turns back around. And the second she turns back around, this dumb mother <laughs> is literally shoving a cake into his freaking mouth. <laughs> she literally walked five feet away from him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she's like, 
Before she left, before she walked away from him, she reminded him yet again, don't eat anything. I'm going to go over here five feet from you. I'm going to get this thing and I'm going to turn around. You're eating the guy. <laughs> The next episode was 7.15 a.m., which was yet another Mary, Margaret, and David story. And I was just like, I cannot be bothered. I don't care. <laughs> I am, you, like, yeah. I think that's literally the first time you've mentioned uh, Mary, Margaret. It, like, I had to mention Mary, Margaret earlier, because you, uh, yeah, and it's just like, yeah, don't care about these characters. We're moving on. <laughs> Mary, Margaret, and David are basically cheating on David's wife. Because apparently David was in a coma. Okay, David was in a coma, and then he came out of the coma because Mary Margaret read a book to him. Yeah, and now they're in an illicit relationship because David's already married in this universe, and but they're really Snow White and Prince Charming, so they belong to be together. So they're gonna cheat on his wife, which I was just like, I cannot be bothered with any of this. <laughs> I don't care about either of you people. I hope she finds out and cuts you both. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the episode where you meet Belle for the first time is skin deep and I was just like I don't know if I like Belle as a character I don't know how to feel about it because it's kind of like it's like she's in an abusive relationship but they're kind of trying to play it up like oh but she has the power in this relationship but at the same time it's just like yeah but you're also playing into the old stereotypes of Stockholm Syndrome-esque this is weird I don't like this none of this feels right yeah no <laughs> so, they... like every time Belle and Rumpelstiltskin are in like relationship mode i'm like none of this feels right i hate all of this yeah it, it's weird because uh the the whole stockholm syndrome thing was the thing that people talked about with the original beauty and the beast <clears throat> and then here we have once upon a time a way to sort of reinvent a bunch of the old disney uh, princess stuff and then we come to beauty and the beast and they just do it worse uh let's see a dreamy oh that's the episode where you find out about uh grumpy yeah yeah grumpy the seven dwarves. <laughs> apparently grumpy the se of the seven dwarves was originally named dreamy because he had a a thing with uh, a fairy mm -hmm. uh, i i like how they've kind of reinvented the dwarves like each dwarf has a thing that is given to them upon birth but that also they can change, and this is how we get grumpy, is that he was originally, because he had the dream about the fairy, and then the fairy had to go, and so he got mad and broke his pickaxe, and he got a new one, and now it's grumpy. Grumpy. This is the one where you find out about Red Riding Hood, and they like how they reinvented Red Riding Hood, mm -hmm. which was really interesting, because oh, yeah. it's like, spoiler alert, Red Riding Hood is the wolf. Mm -hmm. that, that was so such... she's a werewolf, which I was just like, this is awesome. Yes, I love that. It's just oh, by the way, we we have to chain we have to chain you up because you're going to be the wolf, and then she stays with them all night, and then she turns yeah. into the werewolf and kills her boyfriend, and it, she's it, like, Whoops. yeah. <laughs> so it's like yeah, so it's like a mystery. So Snow White is there, which is like one of the few times that I was not entirely annoyed by Snow White's presence. I think they they go through like this mystery where they're like searching for the the werewolf that's killing all the people in their village mm -hmm. and they 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 discover that it's her boyfriend it's red it's red riding hood's boyfriend and they're like oh no we gotta chain him up so they chain him to a tree and then it turns out and then they go back to uh snow white goes back to granny's house and uh apparently granny knows the truth no so, yeah <laughs> snow white is like oh don't worry we chained him to a tree he's like he's chained to a tree and as soon as she said that i was like oh no because <laughs> they really buried the lead on that one. Oh yeah they actually managed to get away with tricking me on that one because i was like okay it's it's cool because i was like they kind of lull you into this false sense of security where it's just like oh the good guys win in the end and everything's gonna be fine and like Snow White is there, so I'm, you know they kind of lull me into a false sense of security with Snow White being there. When I was like, "Oh God, I don't care. Snow White always wins. Everything's gonna be fine in the end." Nope, not this time, because Red Riding Hood's the wolf. Oh yeah. <laughs> Honestly, these probably like close to the end of the series were probably the only episodes of uh, Snow White that I actually liked, mm -hmm. <laughs> and that was because she was in a jail cell because she was <laughs> wanted for murder. Yeah. Because Snow White was a criminal. <laughs> Mary, Margaret, and David. Yeah. They decide they're going to go public with their whole affair thing and tell his wife, which they don't do properly. And she ends up, like, going to the school and slapping Snow White in the face, which I was like, yes! <laughs> then she disappears. Her car is, like, found at the edge of town. Also, could see in the series, nobody can leave town. Yes, yeah. The if town anybody tries magic. to leave the town, 
if anybody tries to leave the town, it's like uh, something bad happens. It's like the Bermuda Triangle. If you try to leave town, something bad happens to you. Oh, yeah. You you either die or an accident stops you from leaving town. Basically, you you just, you can't leave town. Mm-hmm. So uh, her car is seen at the edge of town, which is kind of like at this point, it's just kind of like, why does nobody believe that this is a curse? Uh, like if, if nobody's ever left town and everybody who's ever tried has mysteriously disappeared, at some point somebody's got to be like, you know, this is kind of weird. <laughs> At, at least you would think Emma would be like, this sounds kind of like the Bermuda Triangle. Maybe something weird is going on here. It's like, oh, there's a reasonable explanation for why no one can literally leave the town. Anyway, they find her empty car. They can't find her body. So they're like, oh, something bad happened to her. So at first they think it's David, which I was like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, lock him up. And then they're like, no, actually, it's Snow White. And I was just like, oh, thank God it was one of them. <laughs> so Snow White spends pretty much the remainder of the season in a jail cell? I think so. Yeah, pretty much toward, until like the very last couple of episodes. So I was just like, yes, keep her in there. And David kind of like, that's at this point in the series, like David and Snow White sort of kind of take a backseat, mm-hmm. which I was happy about. I can't stress enough how much I don't like this. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, hat trick. This is the episode where Bucky Barnes shows up. Yeah, Bucky Barnes. <laughs> Sebastian Stan shows up and he's the Mad Hatter and he remembers he remembers his real self from before the curse oh yeah which is part of what makes him crazy mm. so it's kind of like Silence of the Lambs like make the hat and make it work and he had Snow White captured at one point and I was just like oh god he's gonna kill her yes next episode was the stable boy which i was just like i love this episode this is the episode where it's just like you finally kind of find out why the evil queen hates snow white so much Mm -hmm. because it turns out snow white snow white found out that the evil queen was in love with the stable boy Mm -hmm. but she was a pope but evil queen is supposed to marry snow white's father yeah so snow white blabs Mm -hmm. which gets the evil queen's mother who's also a witch uh she kills the stable boy by ripping his heart out Mm -hmm. like we told like we said is the thing people's hearts get ripped out and then they hold their hearts and it's all crystal looking heart and then they crush them into dust which is honestly the most scorpion thing ever (laughs) i know right (laughs) like which was why i loved Everybody, anybody who's ripping people's hearts out and crushing them, I was just like, yeah, yep, do it. Let's get it. I, w- I was here for it every time somebody's heart got ripped out. Yeah, so apparently like, this dude just shows up in a town, which apparently is weird because nobody shows up in the town. Except that he does. Except that he does. He the, shows up with the his The rules bot. of the show change from season to season, and I wouldn't, like, it, it's... And they, also, and they also change, apparently, mid-season. Yeah, <laughs> like, episode to episode, it, it's an avant-garde uh, thing. Don't worry about it. Yeah, it was really weird. But Pinocchio shows up, and he's just like... He knows the truth, by the way, mm-hmm. for reasons that... There are a lot of plot points, and a lot of plot points that get broken. And it's entirely possible that we never visit this character ever again. But this is where he, Pinocchio comes back and he's like trying to convince Emma that, hey, yo, this is this is real. The curse is real. Oh, this was interesting. This is the episode where Regina tried to seduce David. Oh, yeah. And I was just like, I'm here for this. <laughs> you might actually make this character interesting if this actually happens. But it didn't happen. He's just like, no, I'm with Mary Margaret. I was like, ah, come on, dude. You can't love each other that much. Stop it. <laughs> Be more interesting. <laughs> Be more. <laughs> like you had a perfectly good opportunity to make me like you as a character. Be complex and interesting, and you chose not to. And then a land without magic, which was I think probably my favorite episode, which is the season finale. Oh yeah. Finally, like Henry gets fed up <laughs> with all of this, with everybody's bullshit. <laughs> yeah, because. <laughs> He's just like, look, you don't believe I'm sick of this crap. <laughs> he's just like, I'm sick of you. He's like, look at uh, Regina. He's like, I know you're the evil queen. You're straight up lying to my face. I hate it. I hate you. Emma, you don't believe I'm sick of this crap. Emma gets uh, an apple turnover ooh, that Regina apple made. Turnover. Yeah, that Regina, Regina made. made. And Henry's just like, look, you don't believe in this? Fine, I'll prove it to you. And he eats the apple turnover. <laughs> and then he goes into like a like a coma the magic induced sleeping, home coma sleeping yeah. uh sleepy curse coma mm-hmm. and then uh, the whole episode is basically them just trying to figure out how to save him finally after like every single hint in this show finally is just kind of like oh this is real <laughs> yeah you are you are glancing over one major thing that happens at the end of ep- of the final episode uh, mr gold he brings magic back oh right yeah he goes to the well <laughs> I forgot because Bell was there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. you can't. Oh, God, that, that's such an important plot point. You can't just ignore that because you don't like that character. <laughs> yeah. The whole thing was Mr. Gold lost his son. Yes. 
you find this out over the course of the season is that Mr. Gold was basically this dude named Rumpel Stillskin. He's just a normal dude. And he was supposed to fight in a war. He didn't. And he ran away. And he was a coward. And everybody calls him a coward. Basically, like, they're they're conscripting people for this war against ogres. It's, it's apparently a really, really bad war. They start taking children when they turn a certain age. Mm-hmm. He's trying to protect his son. Mm-hmm. He finds out about this guy named the Dark One, who's apparently got all these super magical powers. So he finds out if you kill the Dark One, you get to take his powers and you get to be the new Dark One. Well, alert, he's tricked. The reason the person who told him about this was the Dark One. Yeah. And he becomes a Dark One. He finds out it's not really all, it's not a good thing at all. It's a curse. Yep. <laughs> and now you got to bear the curse and I get to die. Ha ha, you suck. <laughs> Peace out. Let's <laughs> wave in celebration of me. A woohoo. So basically, his son is just like, I don't like you being the dark one. Uh, give up your powers. And he's like, okay, if, I promise if you find a way for me to give up my powers, I will. And then he, uh, his son finds a way by basically, he opens a portal into our world. Basically, in this world, magic beans, like Jack and the Beanstalk, <clears throat> they open portals into other worlds. Mm-hmm. In this case, our world. Yeah. He's like, well, all we got to do is go through this portal. We go to a world that doesn't have magic and you'll be free of being the Dark One. The sun jumps in. Rumpelstiltskin's like, nope, because I love magic entirely too much. Cause... Yeah, he's addicted to magic. And he stays. Mm-hmm. So basically, but he immediately regrets it. Oh yeah, of course, because so, he lost his son. Yeah. So essentially, from that moment forward, his entire life becomes about trying to find a way to get to his son. Mm-hmm. So literally everything he's manipulated over the course of this entire show has been basically a plan to get to our world so he can get to his son, Mm -hmm. which is basically like the whole plan revolved around having this curse cast Mm -hmm. so that he could get to the curse would take everybody to a world without magic and make them all forget who they were. Mm -hmm. And then the curse needs to be broken. So he manipulates Snow White, Prince Charming, into what all their situations so that they could be in love and have a baby mm-hmm. that could grow up and 28 years later break the curse so that he can basically finally remember who he is and then bring magic to, into the world so that he can go find his son. Over the Like, when you see all the little stuff that he's been doing and it's just kind of like you piece together how all of it came together. I was like, this show is just going to become about how much more elaborate can these plans get? Tour de force. I love it. <laughs> yes. I love every part of the show except for Snow White and Prince Charming because they're the most boring characters ever. Henry is the most awesome character ever. He's like just this smart, precocious kid who can just figure everything out. And I love him. He's like... He's what Wesley Crusher w- would have been like if Wesley Crusher was good. <laughs> He's what Wesley Crusher should have been like. But Wesley Crusher sucked, and everybody knows he did, including him. So yeah, that's uh, that's season one of that's season one, one. Once Upon a Time. We're going to do more of these, if people like it. I think we're just going to do more of these, uh, because we, we want to talk about season two. Where... We're going to talk about season two, where shit gets bonkers. No, oh, yeah. We're, we're introduced to... Probably the most popular character amongst women in the show, which is really Captain Hook. Ooh. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I can yeah. See that the the ladies love Hook. This episode is I watched season one of Once Upon a Time and I had stuff to say about it. And now we'll, next episode will be I watched season two and I have stuff to say about that. I have a lot of things to say about season two. Oh, yeah. But if you want to, ladies and gentlemen, uh, leave a like <coughs> and subscribe and subscribe to this channel. Uh, and ring the bell. And if you yeah, if you want to do all that, would be great. But also, if you want to see more discussions of movies like this that are not, like, structured and are really convoluted, like Mr. Gold's plan and all over the place, uh, then you can give to our Dude, Patreon. I, we, uh, like, I swear, if, if, if this gets enough views, I will straight up get a cork board in here and i will show you like mr gold like i I will find a way to get a cork board or something i will show you just how, you don't understand how circuitous this plan is if you are interested in seeing more stuff like this you can give to our patreon at patreon.com slash geeks welcome and if you join our patreon you can join our discord where we talk about future episodes of the show ladies and gentlemen thank you for watching and we will see you later good night see you, peace out have a good time everybody good night See you in season two. Seriously, uh, ladies love Hook. They, they, they. I can see why. He's yeah. awesome. I like Hook.